welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to learn how to use a Centro knitting machine. This is a Centro. It has 48 stitches. It's a manual crank and I'm going to show you how we're going to use this. In, <clears throat> in today's tutorial we're going to learn the first setting which is the tubular. tubular setting that means circle how to knit in the round and we're going to make a little beanie like the one that i'm wearing so it looks like that and it is a double knit that means it's two pieces knitted together and joined together to make one Okay, so let's learn how to cast on. Right, before we do that, I just wanted to discuss this machine a little bit because it's the first time I'm bringing it up on my channel. Um, so when I decided that I would really like a knitting machine, I went online and I did a lot of research and the Centro came up as the most popular one that I could find. It was also the biggest manual cranking knitting machine that I could come across. After that, I went ahead and I did as much research on Centro specifically and a few pointers that I found that I have found online and found to be true and would like to share with you are the following. This row counter doesn't really work. It is all there for show. It basically, especially in the um, tubular setting, gets stuck um, at about one so this will go up to like almost one and it'll stay there and that's pretty much standard it seems with all of them another thing that i found and have found, have found to be true and found online is that when cranking it's not always like a very fluid motion like right now for example there's nothing in here and this is already kind of sticky it's not just cranking Let's see it's got stuck there which means that I actually have to hold this machine down while I'm cranking. And if you're using wool that has very little tension, let me just give you an example of wool that has good tension. It's got like a bit of a bounce to it. The machine loves that wool. But if you use wool that doesn't have great tension, aka like this, this actually has a bit of a bounce. This one has no bounce um it'll get stuck very easily and it makes um cranking it even harder that's all i can think of for now other things will probably crop up but um for now we're just going to learn how to cast on to cast on i'm going to crank and that is this piece here i'm gonna crank anti-clockwise till we get to the white tooth which is over here and adjust to make sure that we're in the panel sorry tubular setting once you've gotten to the tooth you're going to grab yourself some waste yarn and by waste yarn i mean wool that you are happy to throw away because um, especially with the first cast on this wool is almost impossible to just unwind because of the way that it winds on. So I end up throwing this wool away a lot. It's like literally wasting it. And we're going to cast on. So the first thing we do is go under the white tooth like that. Crank clockwise. We're going to go with the long piece attached to the wall behind the next tooth in front of the following one make sure that this one here goes down into the machine though that's important and you can throw it back in the middle and then it's a, a sequence of going behind underneath the tooth behind underneath the tooth so we're in we're in, in behind in behind in behind i'm just gonna go like this all the way around
this in behind and behind and When you come back to the white tooth, um, let's crank it a little bit further in. Um, you can take this wool and feed it into this sort of slot business here, and then into the tension gauge. Hold it just for the first crank. Don't yank it hard; just cut, so, sort of give it a bit of a yanker, um, just a little bit, and then crank. You want to crank very very slowly for your first round because you want to make sure that the wool is going underneath let's just go like that underneath every one of these little teeth and it's going behind this sort of lumpy bit so that's very important because if it doesn't do that with even just one tooth then going forward when you start adding your working yarn it could start running and that's nightmare and you may as well just start again here we just done a rotation. I can show you quickly now that we've actually gone around twice and that counter has done nothing. So that is a fact, fortunately. Um, yeah, so this very first round of cranks that you're going to do, you are probably going to end up throwing all of this wool away. So it's sort of a fine line of cranking out enough so that um, the looseness of the stitches is already taken care of. So that when you go in with your working yarn, you don't have loose floppy stitches, but also not cranking so much that you end up wasting a lot of wool. For me, that number is normally around 10 rounds. I don't, I mean, I, know I have a, a row counter on my phone as an app um, to replace this, which means right now I'm not using it because I'm using my phone to film still at this moment in time. So I'm kind of guessing. But I can see we're probably at around six now. Hi, we've reached a little knot, and I'm happy to call that enough. So I'm going to cut that off, and we're now going to add our working yarn. I've decided to make a little green beanie. I'm going to tie a little knot here. Things I want to mention now. If you are joining all together like this and it goes behind these little pieces here, these little pieces here, you can see these little white lines. These are moments when I haven't noticed that this knot is behind there and I've tried to crank and I've cranked it so hard that this is literally bent. Don't make that mistake. Make sure that any knots are in front of this business here and not behind it because if they're behind it you could potentially damage your machine so it's in front we're good to go once it's gone through we're just going to grab those stitches and make sure that they don't get stuck in there <clears throat> this one already has gotten all stuck but that's not a big deal and crank it around and around And we've now done one rotation. I'm going to stop filming now and take out my row counter app. And I'm going to do this for, for 100 rows. Oh, another thing to mention is that you want to make sure that this wall here is always nice and loose. The one that's feeding into the tension gauge and to this little feeder. As if it's getting tight, um, it's going to make it difficult to crank and it could potentially cause these stitches to pop up and off your machine. So we're going to go now. I'm probably going to go for about 10 to 20 rows. And then we're going to add weights here just to hold it down. Okay, we're at a point now where we're ready to add weights. And the reason we do that is because this will curl up. And it could potentially curl into itself and push these stitches up and off the machine. Which is horrible. So... What I normally do is I'll go for one over there, 
one and directly opposite it, one in the middle of those two, one in the middle again, and just because I've only got two pegs left, I'll make this like this, and I'll do the same here. Try to keep your pegs on the waist yarn and not on the working yarn, just so you don't mutate the stitches. And now that it's all pegged and weighed down, I'm going to keep going. Once your pegs have reached the bottom here, you can take them off so that they don't get all twisted up and potentially curl things up and off the needles. When you've knitted out your hundred or so stitches, you can take off your working yarn, re-add your waist yarn. Being careful not to place the knot behind the tension gauge. About cranking a couple of rotations first and then placing it in. You can do this maybe for five rows. So I'll just call it five. And now to cast off, you're simply just going to keep cranking with no wool in here. And seeing as we're right at the end, I'm just going to keep cranking. And now there's no wool. For the first round, it will just drop all of these stitches down. And when I go around again, you'll see they start to pop off. There we go, starting to pop off. Some of them may get stuck. Oh yes, this was the one other thing I wanted to mention. The center in a team machine comes with these cool darning needles. There's a small, medium, and large. I think this one's the medium. Um, yeah, some of them may get stuck and may just need a little help. It happens. It didn't happen this time. Once you've got your piece, you're just going to grab it and you're going to give it a little shake on both ends like this. This just loosens up all of your stitches. And we're going to turn it inside out. Pardon me, we're going to fold it. We're going to fold it now. Like this. With your stock and eight stitches on the outside and technically on the inside too. I'm just going to fold it in to line these two ends together. Then you're going to grab some of your working yarn and your darning needle and you're going to cut off maybe a meter. Now you're going to see what I mean by those cast on stitches being quite difficult to um, remove. So because of the way that we cast it on with the in out in out method, it sort of creates this like almost like a lifeline that runs through the stitches and prevents them from pulling and you just literally cannot pull that out. <clears throat> so what I normally end up doing now is I will cut, if you look Not that stitch, but the one above it. I'll cut that one. Like this. Which means all of this will now we're going to throw away, which sucks. But unless you have a lot of patience to sit and pull out meters and meters and meters of wool, um, 
then this is kind of the only other way to do it. So that's why I don't cast on too much. I cast on as little as I possibly can. And then I sort of just cut my losses. So make sure that I use wool that I either have like just a really little bit of and there's nothing I can do with it. Or wool that doesn't knit well. Or just, you know, in a funny color that I don't necessarily like. Oh, the Centro machine also comes with a little bit of waste yarn. Which actually is very nice. It's just a very little bit of it. I give you a lot, but the quality of that wool is nice. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and do this all the way around with this one. On the other side, though, it should be really easy to just pull this out. So you can just find the beginning. It is over here. So we can pull these down until they are um, one or two waste yarn uh, stitches in the original working yarn stitches. Once you've done that, you've got stitches on both sides just sort of hanging on some little bit of waste yarn. You're going to take your darning needle and you're going to feed it in, feed it in to a stitch and pop the yarn out of that stitch and into the opposite stitch so through and now we're going to do that all the way around so grab that stitch and the opposite one And so on and so forth all the way until you get back to where you started You've come all the way around to the end now. You are going to take the loose long piece and you're going to yank it and pull all of those stitches closed like this. Don't yank it too hard because if it snaps you'll be very sad. So you just want to pull it so that this hole closes up as much as possible. Get my capacity there. Still a tiny little bit and I'm going to take that and the original um, piece and I'm going to tie those two ends together like so and there's still a teeniest hole so what I'm going to do now is first we're going to cut the loose end off and then we're going to grab our darning needle this back on. We don't need all of this to be honest. We can shorten that. And we're just going to sew that hole closed quickly. It should be like two or three stitches. It doesn't need to be many. There you go, it's closed. 
and then you can just tie that up. How I do that is I'll not pull this through completely. So I've got like a little loop here and the end here and then I'll use that as two ends, tie that together. A couple of times. That's actually fine. Trim it short. And then you can turn that inside out and congratulations, you've made a bee. Next week, we're going to learn how to make a jersey like this on our Centro knitting machines. It's really awesome, super duper patterns. So make sure that you stay tuned to see that.